Uh, what's up, everybody? Back with another edition of Everyday Hoops. Hope you guys are having a good one. Today, we're going to be talking about the 2018 Oklahoma City Thunder, the team with the revived Big Three that was supposed to do a lot of things that they didn't. Unfortunately, we're going to get into depth of that 2018 Thunder season. Uh, thank you guys for the views on the videos and the shorts recently. Really appreciate it. If you like the content around here, consider subscribing, like, turn on notifications, do all stuff like that. I'd really appreciate it. Really upset a lot. Looking at the analytics, a little bit less than 1% of you actually watch the videos, are subscribed. So now if you like the content, hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it a whole lot. And uh, yeah, I don't waste any more of your time. Let's get right into it. So 2018 Oklahoma City Thunder season can't start before we go back to the 2017 Thunder season. They finished 47 and 35 that year. This is the first year without Kevin Durant on the roster as he left to join the Golden State Warriors. They finished sixth in the Western Conference and lost in the first rounds of the Houston Rockets. And this was the year where Russell Westbrook had one of the most insane seasons we've seen in the NBA history. He finished that year averaging 31 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 assists to win the NBA MVP award, becoming the first player since Oscar Robertson to average a triple double in an NBA season and so coming into the 2018 season obviously they needed some help around Russell Westbrook and they went looking for it in many different places in the 2017 draft they had the 21st overall pick selecting Terrence Ferguson who played for the Adelaide 36 is a very athletic wing that yeah he could dunk <laughs> definitely that was one thing about him but of course still needed some development Sam Presti and the Thunder were trying everything to try to build a competent team around their new MVP Russell Westbrook and they looked at some disgruntled stars around the league looking at situations. And on July 6, 2017, they pulled off one of the biggest moves in free agency, sending Victor Lodipo and Demonis Sabonis to the Indiana Pacers for their all-star Paul George. George was coming off his best statistical season with the Indiana Pacers in 2017 as he just came off averaging 23 points, 6 rebounds, 3 assists, and one and a half steals per game, making his fourth all-star appearance. But their team did get swept in the first round by the Cleveland Cavaliers. And there's just a lot of tension building between Paul George and the Pacers, with George saying that the Pacers weren't really taking the right necessary steps to build their team further and to become a championship-level team, where just a few years ago, they were in the conference finals batting LeBron in the heat. George is also coming into the last year of his contract, and, of course, was going to warrant a big extension. So the Indiana Pacers decided to move on and send him to the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now the Thunder built what Paul George around Russell Westbrook, a very, very good co-star. But they were not done yet. A few days later, they made a couple solid free agency moves to try to build out their depth. They signed Raymond Felton, solid veteran point guard to a one-year deal, and also signing stretch for Patrick Patterson to a three-year $16 million deal. And we have to go all the way to September for their next move because in September, they really solidified this team. September 25th, 2017, the Thunder pulled off yet another big trade, sending Enos Kanter, Doug McDermott, and a 2018 second-round pick to the New York Knicks for their star, Carmelo Anthony. Anthony was coming off a 2017 season with the Knicks where he made his 10th All-Star appearance. He averaged over 22 points with 6 rebounds, 3 assists, and shooting 43% from the field. Yet... The team finished with a 31-51 and 51 record. Anthony's time the last few years in New York was very kind of disheartening. He was having some great years, but the Knicks just could not find any competent pieces to put around him in New York. And so eventually, it led to the Knicks deciding to give up and sending Carmelo over to OKC for a package that, looking back at it now, not great. I mean, Doug McDermott, Enos Kanter. Didn't last too long in New York. But they did get that 2018 second round pick that turned into Mitchell Robinson, which is a very funny thing. But yes, now the Oklahoma State Thunder had Paul George and Carmelo Anthony backing up Russell Westbrook. A very impressive turnaround from having Kevin Durant two years ago to just Russell Westbrook now bringing in George and Anthony for pieces that, looking back on it now, weren't super like valuable to the Oklahoma State Thunder. Looked like a really good move. And they solidified this with four days later signing Russell Westbrook to a five-year, $206 million extension, which at that point was the largest contract in NBA history. Westbrook, of course, the heart and soul, the guy in OKC. Everybody loved Russ in OKC. And coming off an insane 2017 season, it was only right 
they deserve this money. The roster coming into the 2018 season for the Thunder was very interesting. Of course, they had the big three of Westbrook, Paul George, and Carmelo Anthony, but they had some solid pieces surrounding them. They had a 24-year-old Steven Adams who looked like he was going to be the solidified starter for that team. They had guys like Andre Roberson, Jeremy Grant, Raymond Feller, and Patrick Patterson. They brought in a free agency. Alex Sabrinas, a really nice sharpshooter. 37-year-old Nick Collison around to be a veteran presence. 19-year-old Terrence Ferguson. This Thunder team actually did not look that bad. And with the big three of Westbrook, George, and Anthony, if they could combine together and find a really good way of distributing, scoring, and doing all the other little things, this team looked like it had very nice things in their future. A lot of questions coming into the 2018 season was about Carmelo Anthony. Now being a little older, having a guy like Paul George next to him, people are wondering, should Carmelo Anthony come off the bench and be the sixth man for this Thunder team, provide that scoring off the bench instead of being in the starting lineup? Because they also had Jeremy Grant, who was a very nice defender and maybe could have fit very well with the Thunder starting five. But of course, the Thunder kept Melo in the starting five because it was Melo at that point. And that's also where we got this famous clip from them during media day. Hey, P, they said I got to come off the bench. <laughs> The first game with the new big three of the Oakland State Thunder happened to be against the New York Knicks, this time in OKC, and the Thunder got the win 105-84. to Paul George finished with 28 points, Melo had 22, and Russell Westbrook put up 21, 10, and 16. A very solid start to this new big three era. The Thunder started the season 4-3 and three with some very solid wins and losses, but then they lost four straight Games. They lost to the Celtics 101 to 94. Paul George put up 25. Westbrook had 19, 6, and 11. And Melo had 10 points on 3 for 17 shooting, but he did have 14 rebounds. But Kyrie and the Celtics took the win. Then they lost to the Blazers 103 to 99 as Paul George and Russell Westbrook combined for 52. Carmelo Anthony and Raymond Fallon each had 15, but they were not enough for Damian Lillard's 36, 5, and 13 assists. Juan Nurkic had 25 and CJ McCollum put in 22. They then lost to the Kings 94 to 86, and they got outscored 57 to 32 in the second and third quarters combined. As Westbrook put up 20, 12, and 6, but Paul George and Carmelo Anthony really struggled to shoot, combining to shoot 8 for 33 from the field and 6 for 18 from 3, and ended the losing streak with a loss to the Nuggets 102 to 94. As Melo put up 28, but Paul George and Russell Westbrook struggled to shoot, combining for 12 for 36 on the field, and their bench got outscored 49 to 27. They dropped their record to 4 and seven, but then they brought it back, winning three games in a row. As Paul George really took over these next few games, they beat the Clippers 120 to 111. As Paul George put up 42, 9, and 7 on 13 for 22 shooting, they then beat the Mavericks 112 to 99. As Paul George put up 37, 8, and 5, and they beat the Bulls 92 to 79. As even though Paul George didn't have a great game, they outscored the Bulls 58 to 24 in the first half, easily winning that one. They then ended November 1-5 to start December 1st with an 8-12 and record, tied for 9th in the West. Definitely not the best start. Definitely could see some consistency issues there. And just, I mean, it was the first month of the season. They really were just trying to put this team together, trying to figure out what things worked, what things didn't. So you can give them a little bit of a break there. They started December on, with 6-3 and three record to bring the record to 14-15. and 15, And then they went on a 6-game winning streak in mid-December. They beat the Nuggets 95-94. Even though it wasn't really a fun game, Westbrook really dominated, putting in 38-9-6. They then smacked up the Utah Jazz 107-79 as the big three combined for 60. They beat the Hawks 120-117 as Westbrook put up 37-15. Melo had 24 and Steven Adams put up 16-10. They beat the Jazz again 103-89 as Westbrook had a 27-10-10 triple-double and Paul George at 26. They then beat one of the best teams in the league, the Houston Rockets, on Christmas Day 112-107 as the big three combined for 75 points, and then put the sixth game on it, beating the Raptors 124-107 to 107 as Paul George and Russell Westbrook combined for 63 points and 15 assists. The Thunder are now really starting to find their stride. They went 1-2 and two in the last few games of December to start the new year of 2018 with a 20-17 record, going for fifth in the Western Conference. Once December started, the Thunder started to become very streaky. It looked very, very weird, the Oakland State Thunder. They would go on very inconsistent streaks. They won the first two games of January, 
beating both LA teams, the Lakers 133 to 96 and the Clippers 127 to 117. They then lost their next three games, losing to the Suns 114 to 100, the Blazers 117 to 106, and the Wolves 104 to 88. But then they will go on a season long eight game win streak after losing those three. They beat the Hornets 101 to 91, the Kings 95 to 88, the Lakers 114 to 90, the Cavs and LeBron 148 to 124. The Nets 109 to 108, the Wizards 121 to 112, the Pistons 121 108, the, and the 76ers 122 to 112 to bring the record up to 30 and 20 throughout 50 games, still going for fifth in the Western Conference. This is where we really started to see the Thunder in their element. Everybody clicking, getting really good wins, blowouts, and very close ones. And this is when everyone thought, okay, here comes the Oklahoma City Thunder. But after they game one straight, they then lose their next four games. Losing to the Wizards 102 to 96, the Nuggets 127 to 124, the Pelicans 114 to 100, and the Lakers 108 to 104. Again, the streakiness was very crazy <laughs> for this Thunder team. They then went three and two of their next five games that entered the All Star break with a 33 and 26 record, still being fifth in the Western Conference. Russell Westbrook was named to the All Star team, and Paul George was named an All Star replacement for Demarcus Cousins who tore his ACL the month before. At the All-Star break, this Thunder team looked very solid. I mean, once the Westbrook was having a great season, so was Paul George. Melo was still trying to figure out how to really be comfortable in the team, but he was still playing good. Steven Adams was really nice. And offensively and defensively, this Thunder team was very solid. Now, they did have a lot of questions. Of course, the consistency issues and the streakiness is one thing, but also their depth. They didn't really have an amazing bench. They had some solid players here and there, but they, didn't, they just couldn't really find a good collection of players off their bench to really bring this Thunder team to the next level, you know? But, of course, with Westbrook, George, or Mello, who knows? Everyone still kind of believed a little bit in this Thunder team because they had those three stars. They came out of the All-Star break 4-1 and one in their next five games, losing to the Warriors only 112-80. to They then will lose their next two games, losing to the Blazers 108-100 to and the Rockets 122-112. to And then, the streakiness is back, because then they win their next six games, beating the Suns 115 to 87, the Spurs 104 to 94, the Kings 106 to 101, the Hawks 119 to 107, the Clippers 121 to 113, and the Raptors 132 to 125, to prove their records to 43 and 29, fourth in the Western Conference. The Thunder now had 10 games left in the regular season, and at this point, the standings were very, very close. They were not comfortable. At this point in the Western Conference, only four. And a half games separated the third seed and the eighth seed. As things were really, really tight in that mid-Western Conference. Teams trying to really solidify their standings. The Thunder at this point were only really two games behind the three seed, but also only a game and a half above the five seed San Antonio Spurs. So these next ten games were very crucial for where the Thunder would end up for this season. They would then lose four of their next five games after this. And all of them in very, very close, tough fashion. They lost to the Celtics 199. They then defeated the Miami Heat 105 to 99. But then they lose their next three, losing to the Blazers 108 to 105 as CJ McCollum put up 34. They lost to the Spurs 103 to 99, getting outscored 26 to 18 in the fourth, and losing to the Nuggets 126 to 125 in overtime as Paul Millsap put up 36 and a young Jokic had 23, 16, and six. The record would drop to 43 and 33, as they are now tied for fifth in the Western Conference with the Minnesota Timberwolves, and now only two and a half games above the eighth seed at this point, with only five games left. So they really need to finish strong in order to try and even think about getting home court advantage. And luckily for them, they did. They ended their season winning four of their last five games, finishing the season with a 48 and 34 record. And with tiebreakers, they would finish fourth in the West, getting a home court advantage for the first round. For their season, Russell Westbrook coming off his MVP season, now playing with two more co-stars that really needed the ball. Westbrook still played really, really well, averaging just under 25.5 points with 10 rebounds and 10 assists, becoming the first player in NBA history to average triple-double in multiple seasons. He also averaged just under two steals, shooting 45% from the field as he made all NBA second team and finished fifth and MVP voting. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Paul George, for the first time since becoming an all-star like player being the second option, really impressed. He averaged just under 22 points with five rebounds, three assists, and two steals, shooting 43% from the field and 40% from three, 
as he made all NBA third team and finished fourth in defensive player of the year voting. Another third star, Carmelo Anthony, even though he kind of struggled a little bit here and there trying to find his rhythm and his place, still had a very solid season, averaging 16 points and five rebounds, shooting 40% from the field and 35% from three. While their fourth guy, Steven Adams, actually also really impressed the season, um, being a really good rebounder, getting easy buckets inside, and defensively was very, very good. He finished averaging just under 14 points with nine rebounds, a steal, and a block, and actually finished sixth in the most improved player voting. Coming into the playoffs, the Thunder were a very interesting team. Of course, they had the star power and the scoring ability of Westbrook, George, and Carmelo Anthony. Um, they had a very solid offense and defense. Looking back on it, they were top 10 in both offense and defense. To be exact, they were the seventh best offense and the ninth best defense. But of course, they had some questions. The streakiness, ability of their team, as you obviously saw, they would go on a six-game winning streak, then a four-game losing streak, then a three-game winning streak, then a four-game losing streak. It would just go very back and forth. And their depth. Their bench was not really great. Um, they also signed Corey Brewer throughout the season. And he actually played pretty solid, providing a lot of energy on the wing. But, of course, they didn't really have a lot of role players that other teams would not necessarily fear, but just they weren't really worried about them. You know? But, again, they still had the offensive firepower and star power and a very solid all-around team, offensively and defensively, that teams still were looking at them. Going into the playoffs, they would match up with the number 5 seed, the Utah Jazz, who also finished 48. And 34. Now, if you think, I remember the 2018 season, the Utah Jazz were not supposed to be here. They lost Gordon Hayward in free agency to the Boston Celtics, and this was supposed to be kind of a rebuilding year, a rebuilding era for the Utah Jazz, if you will. But there was one rookie out of Louisville that was the 13th overall pick that didn't get the message for that. Donovan Mitchell exploded onto the scene in his rookie season averaging 20.5 points, finishing second in Rookie of the Year behind Ben Simmons, and leading the Utah Jazz to the NBA playoffs at 48-34, and 34, which was insane at this point. He really bursted onto the NBA scene and bringing this Utah Jazz team that no one even feared throughout the season to the NBA playoffs. But, of course, a lot of people, and even me myself, had the Thunder still winning the series. I mean, the Jazz were a fun story, but they're still very young. They had a rookie leading them in the playoffs. Uh, they had some very solid role players, but people still saw the Oakland State Thunder as the favorite in this series because they had Westbrook, George, and Anthony, and were just and people thought were going to be the all around just better team. Going to Game One, the Oakland State Thunder shot very well in Game One, and Paul George had a very nice debut, finishing with 36 points on eight for 11 shooting from three. Westbrook also put in 29-13-8, and the Thunder shot 14 for 29 from three as the Thunder won game one, 116 to 108, taking a 1 0 series lead. This is also the birth of playoff P. But in game two, the Utah Jazz fought back. Donovan Mitchell, again, having a really good rookie season, continued it in the playoffs as in the fourth quarter, he scored 13 points for Utah. And not just offensively, but defensively, the Jazz really locked in as they held the Thunder to just 16 points in the fourth quarter, including holding the big three of OKC to just two points combined as the Jazz would win 102-95. to Donovan Mitchell put in 28, Ricky Rubio had 22-79, and Derek Favors put in 20 and 16 rebounds to tie the series at one going back to Utah. But of course, still not super, super worried for the OKC Thunder, right? The Jazz, even though they really came out, had a good game too, the Thunder could bounce back from this. But in Game 3, Utah ran it up on the Thunder, outscoring them 67-45 to in the second and third quarter combined, as Utah would win 115-102. to And this game was the Ricky Rubio game. He dominated all over the court. Rubio finished with 26-11-10. Just a phenomenal game from him. Donovan Mitchell put up 22 with 11 rebounds. And Joe Ingles woke up, finishing with 21 points, shooting 5-10 for 10 from 3. Not only playing good defense on Paul George, but also coming in and being very good offensively. Finding his teammates, shooting the ball very, very well. The Thunder, George finished with 23 points and 7 for 16 shooting. Westbrook finished with 14, 11, and 9 with 8 turnovers and shooting 5 for 17 from the field. While Melo and Raymond Felton each had 14 points. Utah was now up 2-1. And going to Game 4, this was a huge game, obviously. The Jazz, if they would win Game 4 and taking a 3-1 series lead commandingly, 
and the Thunder, they really needed to win this game to go back home with a tie series. In game four, they got very, very chippy. There were eight technical fouls throughout this game for both teams. It was very, very chippy. A lot of pushing, shoving, arguments, stuff like that. The first half was very close. The Thunder came out really nice, but the Jazz brought it back in the second half. They led by six at halftime, but then the third quarter was the deciding factor as Utah outscored OKC 31-23 to in the third quarter and eventually cruised to a 113-96 to win to take a 3-1 series lead. Donovan Mitchell, once again, playing amazing. 33 points on 13 for 28 shooting. Joe Ingles getting into it with Paul George d- defensively and on offense just being really, really good. He put up 20. Rudy Gobert had 16-10 and Ricky Rubio had 13-6-8. Paul George put up 32 points. Westbrook had 23 and 14, shooting 7 for 18. And Melo had just 11 points on 5 for 18 shooting. Now, it was panic mode for OKC. Down 3-1, back at home. The Thunder needed anything in their heart, anything, to try and at least make this a little bit competitive. Game 5, it was looking like the season was over. Utah was up by 15 and a half. And after Jay Crowder hit a 3-pointer with 8.34 left in the third quarter, Utah led 71 to 46. It looked over for OKC. I mean, this big three, a lot of expectations going out in five games and going out like this to the Utah Jazz and a rookie Donovan Mitchell. It looked like it was over, but there was one man for the Thunder that has been there throughout all of it, the ups and the downs, the heart of OKC, the former MVP, and he wasn't going out like that. And that was Russell Westbrook. He put on a show from then on out. For the rest of the third quarter, the Thunder outscored Utah 32-7, to bringing the team all the way back. They would win the fourth quarter 29-21 to and come back from down 25 to win 107-99. to At that point, the third largest comeback in playoff history. Russell Westbrook put on an amazing performance, 45 points, 15 rebounds, and 7 assists, while Paul George also chipped in with 34 points, as those who combined for 79 of the 117 points to force a Game 6 back in. In Utah. Again, this is the same thing for the Thunder. It was all hands on deck, panic mode, game six, gotta come out and win this game and force the game seven at home. The Jazz outscored the OKC 37 29 in the third quarter to take a lead, and the fourth quarter was very back and forth. The last minute and a half of this game was a lot. Russell Westbrook hit a three pointer to make it a 92 91 deficit with Utah still leading. Then the other end, Diamond Mitchell down, found Derek Favors for a jumper to lead 94 to 91. On their next possession, the Oklahoma City Thunder got six straight offensive rebounds. They just could not find the rim. But, of course, Steven Adams being in there, just having feisty rebounders, they got seven shot attempts down three and missed all of them. Once Westbrook and Paul George took all of those shots, both missing layups and two three-pointers. Mitchell will eventually get the rebound and make two free throws with six seconds left to end the game 96-91. Utah winning and moving on, and the Thunder were done in the first round once again. In game six, Donovan Mitchell, again, just playing absolutely phenomenal for a rookie. 38 points in this game. Russell Westbrook, got to give respect to him. He tried everything in his power to bring this team to a win. He finished with 46 points, 10 rebounds, and 5 assists, and also took 43 shots in this game. Russell Westbrook wasn't going out like that. But unfortunately, we couldn't say the same about Melo and Paul George. The other two big three members probably had some of the worst games we've seen from them. Melo finished with just seven points and only took seven shots. Shot three for seven. Very unlike Melo as just kind of didn't have a really good series against Utah. But Paul George, I mean, at least he was shooting the ball, but it wasn't much better. George finished with five points, shooting two for 16 from the field and 0 for 6 from three. Thunder were done. The big three failed, losing in the first round in six games, not even to a team with expectations. They lost to the Utah Jazz, a team that coming to the season wouldn't even thought about as a playoff team. And yet, they beat the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Jazz would eventually go on to lose to the Rockets in the second round, 4-1. to one. And that 2018 season was the first and only season of the Oklahoma City Thunder big three. As even though they did sign Paul George to a five-year extension that offseason, They shipped Carmelo Anthony off to the Atlanta Hawks after just not having an amazing season at OKC. So Thunder went with just 
the George and Westbrook duo for 2019. And I think we know how that season ended. But yeah, that's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Once again, if you enjoyed the content around here, consider subscribing, like, turn notifications, all stuff like that. I really appreciate it. We upset a lot. Um, and also, let me know what other teams I should do for this. This is my second time doing this. Kind of remember this team series I did with the 2019 Kings, the Kings team that should have broken the playoff drought that year. If you didn't watch the video, you can go back and watch it on my channel. And let me know if you have any other teams uh, that I can do for this. I'm trying to do probably about one a week. I think it's very fun to just go back and reminisce on this type of obscure history. That's it. For the teams that I would do, don't send me teams that are like won championships or did something historic. Send me teams like this that maybe could have been forgotten about in the history of ball. Where you look at it and be like, oh, dang, I forgot that happened. That type of team or player even. If a player had a really good season or a really bad season randomly, let me know. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow.